Today we're going to be working on a QNAP model TS-653 Pro. The customer sent it in saying that the unit will not boot. Um, they did also state that there was a power surge or lightning strike that occurred before the unit failed. And right now we can see it says system booting. It's been doing that for about 20 minutes now. And something else to note is down here, all of the lights are red. Now the most common fix for a no boot issue with these units is to install a 100 ohm resistor between pin one and pin eight of the LPC connector. Now the customer actually already did that. So looking at the motherboard, just above this RAM brick, right over here is our resistor. This is the LPC connector. So that repair has already been done. Since the repair did not resolve that issue, we're gonna remove the motherboard out of circuit and we're gonna do some resistance checks to see if the lightning strike or power surge did affect other components or parts on the motherboard. All right, I have the motherboard removed out of the units. And when it comes to lightning strikes or power surges, most commonly they enter through the ethernet ports. So this is the area we're gonna look at first. These are the two ethernet ports or four, and they immediately go to these two chips. So these are our two ethernet internet chips. They have similar layouts. They have similar capacitors and components around them. And one of the things we're gonna do is use those similarities to compare and contrast and make sure that some of the components around them aren't shorted. So the reason I'm doing that is because I don't really know exactly what resistance, for example, this capacitor is supposed to have. Now this one has 11 kilo ohms. And if I look at the other one over here, this one also has 11 kilo ohms. So I can know these guys aren't shorted or they're both shorted in the exact same way. All right, let's check out this little guy above. And that one is showing 7.28 kilo ohms. On this one over here, we're getting 2.3 ohms. So that tells me that there's a short here. And of course this capacitor, this side I believe is ground, and this side goes directly to this chip over here. So most likely this chip over here is shorted. Let's do a couple more checks. So we're gonna check these guys over here. Do we have a short? 7.4 kilo ohms, that seems correct. And this one over here has 7.37 kilo ohms, so that's also good. Let's check this one over here, 5.46 kilo ohms. And I believe this one's in parallel with it. Yep, 5.45, which the equivalents are over here on this side. And this one has 0 0.8 ohms. And over here, 1.2 ohms. Now, if I'm correct, let's see. This side of the capacitor should be ground. Nope, this side of the capacitor is ground. And this side is not. So this side of the capacitor is ground. This side is not over here. So that means, where does that go? That just goes underneath here. Okay, so it goes right to this pin. So that means this pin over here on the chip is shorted to ground. And of course, on this one over here, it is not. All right, so to me, that does confirm that this ethernet chip is fine. This one is shorted and needs to be replaced and is the most likely culprit and reason why the unit cannot boot. So most likely when we're looking at the motherboard, they were only using the ethernet on these ports over here and not over here. And that's why only this chip was affected and not both of them. So let's go ahead and replace that next and then we'll retest and see if that resolved our issue. So to remove the chip, I'm gonna be using my bottom heater over here. And I have removed the RAM bricks and any other heat sensitive components off of the board. So we're gonna preheat it a little bit with some bottom heat, and then we're gonna remove that chip with our hot air. We're gonna go ahead and put some flux. Now I am gonna take advantage of the board being hot to remove some of that extra solder. We'll clean all that up. Do a little alcohol clean here. Get rid of that extra flux we added earlier. All right, so let's go ahead and take another look. We had, I believe this capacitor over here was shorted and now we have mega ohm, so it's open, which makes sense because there's nothing connected anymore. So the short is gone. And we had these two guys down here and I believe we're gonna see still a short, 0 0.7 ohms. And over here, 4.8 ohms. 
All right, so we did get rid of part of a short, but not actually a full short. So let's take a look and see if there's more damage. We've determined that this side is ground, and this side is the shorted side. Now it does go right underneath this, uh, the connector here. So I believe we're gonna have to actually remove this connector and see if there's anything underneath. Uh, perhaps the connector itself is shorted and removing it will resolve the short, get rid of it. Um, or we might find something else. So let's go ahead and remove it and see what we get next. Looking at the two connectors from the back here, uh, when I have my, so we have all these pins here. I have my multimeter on beep mode. And when I probe these pins, I get a beep on every single one of these pins. So uh, not these. These I do. Everything is shorted to ground here. When I do the same on this side, of course. No short, no short, no short, no short, no short, no short. So we're all good here. So I know that this whole side is definitely okay, but something I did notice is that we do have the equivalent chips on the back. This chip on the back side is also shorted, and I know this because I have one of my probes here on ground. Going back to this chip, when I rake the pins here, no shorts, no shorts, beep, beep, beep. A lot of these pins are shorted to ground. And when I compare to this one over here, Not a single one is shorted to ground. So that confirms that this one over here on the back side is also shorted and also needs to be removed. And I guess it makes sense because they're probably in parallel or communicating with one another with the one on the top. All right, so for this one, I'm actually not gonna use the bottom heat. We're gonna try and just get it with only the top hot air. which means I'm gonna do a little bit more heat. All right, and that's another very clean lift. Same as before, gonna take advantage of the chip or the board being very hot to remove that extra solder here. All right, that'll do. Same thing, a little cleanup. All right, and now we can go ahead and use our center ground pad. We'll do the same thing again. We'll rake across these pins. Oh, and we still have shorts. All right, so that means the shorts did not actually come from that chip. Ay, 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 which I'm very surprised, but they are all going through these traces here back again is it I mean these aren't supposed to be these are just diode banks I believe they're supposed to be shorted across yeah these are supposed to just be shorted across so this is normal so the only thing that makes sense is the actual port yeah so, so it has to be the port itself all right, so our next step is the port is gonna get removed because it, this doesn't make sense otherwise. I'm gonna try to do this with just some desolder wick and I fear it's not gonna be a good time. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our desolder pump. Nope. Let's try this one. Oh, that's better. All right, we're getting some success here. Whoa, all right, so very strange, but these last two are very hard to desolder. I wonder if they're just on a large ground pad. I mean, most likely, but. We're approaching the 450 Celsius, that's really high. All right, we're gonna have to do this, I think, off screen because I just need to focus on getting this removed and doing it on camera it does make it so I have to do things slightly differently. All right, we finally removed the connector itself after quite a bit of struggle. So 
as you can tell, it is now completely removed. I ended up having to use hot air, and I think I may have potentially damaged this trace over here. So we'll have to deal with that in a bit. But let's go ahead and do another check. So again, we're in beep mode, so when we have a short, we have a beep. So this one we still have a short, but everything else is no longer shorted. So let's follow this one. This is our last short, and this trace goes here, 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 to here. All right, so this is shorted to ground somehow. Let's see if the same is the case over here. It is not. All right, so we're gonna probably have to remove this little guy here. And let's do a check on the front. So I wanna do a similar check over here. Let's see. All right, we don't have any shorts over here. Not shorted to, oh. So the middle one here is shorted to ground. And I believe that is probably normal. Yeah. Okay. So if we go back over here, so this one here is shorted to ground, which is ground over here on that middle pin. All right, yeah, so it's just that middle pin. So it looks like the middle pin is shorted to this line here. So we'll have to remove this guy. Oh, so a little bit of flux. We use our hot air again. All right, I think it's molten. Yep, there we go. All right, let's try one more time here. Hopefully this is the last time. So beat mode still. And no more shorts. Oof. All right, so we got rid of all the shorts. So that is ground still. And that line is no longer shorted to ground. So I just plugged it in. We're gonna go ahead and press the power button. All right, well, we still have all of our red lights. Looks like there's more problems then. So uh, we're probably gonna have to take another look at the motherboard and see what's going on. So I removed the motherboard back out of the unit and I removed the heatsink. I have a feeling that our processor is actually affected. And one of the reasons for that is because if we take a look at this capacitor right over here, we have a short, oops. So I get a beep and I'm getting about 0 0.3 ohms. Now, of course, this processor is in circuit over here, so it's possible that that capacitor reading is correct. I don't actually have another one of these motherboards to compare off of right now, um, but the other thing is the um, with these Intel CPUs, the Atom C2000 bug is a common problem, which can cause the system boot error, which is why we do that resistor, uh, 100 ohm resistor on the LPC connector. It's possible that the processor was damaged during this lightning strike or power surge, and the resistor trick is just not enough, so we have to replace it. So I'm guessing that that's gonna be our next step. So let's go ahead and do that next, and I'm really hoping that'll resolve our faults. If you have a NAS unit you would like to send in for repair, please check out the video's description below. We have a link to our website's contact form, which you will need to fill out and provide symptoms along with the model of your unit. All of our repairs come with a one-year warranty.
Okay, and we're back. I did have to wait about a week or so for my extra parts to come in. So in the meantime, we did finish reinstalling the processor back onto the motherboard. We have our heatsink back on. We've installed some of our RAM sticks back on. Uh, everything is pretty much set and ready to go. I did also install our new ethernet port. I did do that off camera because that took a while. That took a lot of uh, effort and this video is already very long. I've also reattached one of our ethernet chips. I'm gonna do the second one here on camera right now. So looking at the chip that I reinstalled over here, we can recheck our capacitors real quick. And this one was at two ohms originally. Now it is showing 8.6 kilo ohms. And then these two down here were also shorted and we're getting kilo ohms, 7.8 kilo ohms and rising. And then this one is 7.4, 7.8. And I believe it was about one ohm and two ohms or so originally. So clearly now the shorts are gone. So we have successfully replaced this chip, gotten rid of the shorts. Now let's go ahead and do the last chip that's on the back. So because this one has a bottom ground pad, we're gonna add some solder paste first to that pad. And what this solder paste is essentially just a ton of little solder balls in flux. All right, and I just hit it with a little bit of hot air to help me spread it. There we go. Not very much, obviously, because I don't want it to actually melt. This is just for laying it around the ground pad because it was actually kind of cold and hard to move around. And of course we have our pin one marked over here, which is our little dot down here. And we're gonna try and just line it up best we can. And that's gonna do it for us. All right, and that should do it. Okay, I'm gonna give it a little poke, make sure the ground pad is solid. Yep, and it's soldered. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and add some flux all around and we'll go ahead and solder the pins on the side. All right, and that looks pretty good. All right, we have the motherboard back in the unit. It is more or less put back together. I don't have the front plate and I don't have the cover, but everything else should be good. So let's go ahead and plug it in. And we get some green lights. It does say system booting, and we no longer have any of our red lights. So before, if you recall, the HDD lights were red, indicating that there was a problem, but now, it looks like we have green lights. Now I do have a hard drive in the slot number six and it is green and detecting. So let's go ahead and wait a couple minutes and hopefully we'll make it through the system booting, which is where we were stuck at earlier. But given the fact that we don't have the red lights anymore, very high chance that we have a successful repair here. Oh, there is one more thing I wanted to mention and it is for the purpose of this test, it just beeped. We never had that before, but for the purpose of this test, I did remove the resistor up here that the customer had installed um, to make sure that it doesn't throw off any of our uh, repairs. Uh, we are gonna put the resistor back on before we ship it out, um, because even though we do have a brand new processor on there, this will help extend the life of that processor that we replaced. So, okay, and it is all the way booted in. So we have resolved the fault. Now let's check our ethernets. Okay, I have a green light flashing, but I need another second light. Okay, it is detecting. I have an orange light back here, seeing the LAN is connected. So looking at our system over here, I actually have two NAS devices. Uh, I am testing an 872XT that we just fixed, but we also are detecting the 653 Pro. So let's go ahead and load it up and it looks like it's it's seeing it okay so we're booted in we're not going to update it now all right so now we're going to try something else is we're just going to go to the next ethernet port and we have our lights coming up the land light is detecting again 
Okay, and it just popped back up, so it is detecting through that Ethernet port. We have two more to check. Okay, so this does complete our final repairs for the QNAP TS-653 Pro. Um, this actually did take us a couple of weeks total because we did have to special order some of those parts, but the customer has been very patient with us. He's gonna be very happy to hear that the unit is finally back up and running. If you have a unit similar to this one or a different unit that you'd like to have us fix, let us know in the comments down below. We'll also have links to our website link for the flat rate repair of this unit. Uh, that'll be in the comments and in the description below. Uh, otherwise, if you like the video, make sure to go ahead and leave us a like and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching.